everybody. How are you all doing? It's Miss Erin and I am coming to you from the Northeast Regional Library for another fun virtual story time today. Today we're going to talk a little bit about steamboats and the Kentucky Derby and what the steamboat race has to do with the Kentucky Derby and Derby events that we celebrate around our city this time of year. We're gonna start with, if you're happy and you know it, so that we can kind of sing the song together and that'll be a nice fun way for us to start story time. So this is If You're Happy and You Know It by David A. Carter. And I bet you know the song and the words to this song. So I want you to sing along with me as we go. We're gonna start by clapping our hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, clap, clap. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, clap, clap. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, clap, clap. You see the kitty cat clapping? I want you to guess what you think the next animal is going to be in the story. So this book has a different animal on each page. So you think for one second, and I'm gonna turn the page and we'll see if you guessed it, okay? You have a guess? Did you guess dog? Or did you guess another animal? Well, it is a dog. And guess what the dog is going to do? Wag its tail. So we can wag our tail. We're gonna pretend by wiggling a little bit, okay? If you're happy and you know it, wag your tail. Wiggle, wiggle. If you're happy and you know it, wag your tail. Wag, wag. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, wag your tail. Wag, wag. Okay, let's get some wiggles out. Okay, now we're gonna think about another animal that we might think is coming on the next page. So let's think for a second before I turn the page, okay? Do you have an animal in mind? Let's see if you guessed it. Did you guess there was gonna be a skunk? Bee there's a skunk in here. But guess what the skunk does? She pats her head. Are you ready? If you're happy and you know it, pat your head, pat, pat. If you're happy and you know it, pat your head, pat, pat. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, pat your head, pat, pat. Good job. Okay, we're going to think again about another animal. Okay, so let's think about different kinds of animals that we might see. So far, we've had a cat, a dog, and a skunk. But these animals, the cat and a dog might be pets. Skunk might be a pet, lives outside. These animals don't have a lot to do with each other, do they? So I don't know. You have to come up with a guess. Are you ready? Let's see who it is. <gasps> it's a chicken. Did you guess chicken? <sighs> Look at that chicken. Now the chicken's gonna flap its wings. Are you ready? You got your wings ready? Put your arms out, we're gonna flap. If you're happy and you know it, flap your wings, flap, flap. If you're happy and you know it, flap your wings, flap, flap. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, flap your wings, flap, flap. Great job. All right, we have to keep guessing. We gotta keep thinking what, not, what animal is coming on the next page. Now this time I'm gonna give you a little hint, okay? This is another kind of a bird, okay? And this bird you would see outside, maybe in a forest or maybe even in your backyard in a tree. And this animal likes to sleep during the day. This kind of bird likes to sleep during the day, okay? Do you, have you thought of an animal? Have you thought of a bird you think it might be? Let's see who it is. It's an owl. Are you ready? Did you guess owl? Ooh, ooh. Look 
what the owl can do. The owl winks its eye. Can you wink one eye? Can you wink? So you close one eye and leave one open, or you can use your finger if you need to. But don't poke yourself in the eye. Okay, here we go. If you're happy and you know it, wink your eyes. Wink, wink. If you're happy and you know it, wink your eyes. Wink, wink. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, wink your eyes. Wink, wink. Good job. I think this might be my favorite page. I love the owl. Okay, we have one more animal to think about and guess what you think it might be. It's not a bird, okay? Now, if you looked at the front of the book before we started, you might remember the animal. The animal that's coming on the next page is the animal that was on the front cover of the book. You got something in mind? Let's see if your guess is right. Did you guess the mouse? It's a mouse. And the mouse has got his hands way up high. So stretch up high. We're gonna reach down and touch our toes. You ready? If you're happy and you know it, touch your toes. <gasps> reach down. If you're happy and you know it, touch your toes. Stretch. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, touch your toes. Stretch down and find your toes. That's a good little exercise to do to stretch out. Okay, now we're gonna shout hooray. Are you ready to do it with me? Here we go. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! Great job, everybody. Thanks for listening to that story and singing along with me. The next story that I'm going to read today is called All Aboard the Bell of Louisville. And this is written by Marie Bradby and illustrated by Annette Cable. So this is a very nice story all about the Bell of Louisville and steamboats and the history behind the Bell of Louisville, which is a steamboat that we have right here in Louisville, in downtown, on the Ohio River. I wonder if you've ever been on the Bell of Louisville. Well, let's see what the story is about, okay? And then we'll talk a little bit about the steamboat race and other things that you might see coming up around Derby time. They say you can hear the calliope whistle from miles. In Louisville, Kentucky, this busy city of dreams that sits on a curve beside the mighty Ohio River, the calliope whistle plays its cheerful songs, beckoning people onto the oldest operating Mississippi River style steamboat in the world. Did you hear that? It's the oldest operating Mississippi River style steamboat. That's pretty neat and it lives right here in our city. It's the Bell of Louisville. So on these two pages, it's talking about different people that are listening to the sound of the whistle. And that is called the calliope whistle, that special whistle that steamboats make when they're ready to go on their journey. Can you hear the music? So I'll read a couple of children who are gonna stop what they're doing and listen to the sound, okay? Here's Jason in Jeffersonville. He's jogging across the Big Four Bridge. Have you ever seen the Big Four Bridge? Have you ever been downtown and walked across it? And Gita here is putting down her book on the most interesting girl in the world because she hears the calliope. And Tiffany in the Highlands rushes out of her ballet lesson. So everybody is listening to the, to the sound of the whistle and wondering what it is. Hurry, the calliope is calling people to board the bell. Just follow the music to the Fourth Street Wharf to see this magnificent, marvelous, majestic steamboat. They call her Belle because she's as beautiful as the Mona Lisa, the Tower of Pisa, 
the Colosseum, the Zigglock clock that goes tick tock. A long, long time ago, before airplanes and cars, steamboats were one of the few things faster than a horse and wagon. Imagine that. No cars, no airplanes, a horse and a wagon, and steamboats. Head up the grand staircase and wit this wondrous machine. Tickets, please. Tickets, please. Settle into a chair on the hurricane deck or wave from a table on the Texas deck. Can you feel the rumble of the engines? Welcome aboard, says Captain Mark Doty. He's in charge. He makes sure that everyone travels safely. He tells everyone where to find life jackets. He urges people to use the handrails and says, don't throw anything into the river, not even your gum wrapper. And that is a good lesson. First of all, you wanna make sure you listen to that because you wanna make sure you know how to be safe on a boat, know where the life jackets are, and let's not litter in the river. Good lessons. From the wing bridge, Captain Doty gives directions to the crew. Are you ready, he radios. Ready, the crew answers. Back her out slow. Backing out slow. Let the stern lines go. So there's different people on the ship, okay, that help make it run smoothly and correctly. There's somebody called the deckhand. There's a fireman. There's the pilot. And there's the striker. The pilot blows the whistle. One long, three short. Cover your ears. Two. Not even Madame Fufu at the opera can sing that loud. Bon voyage. And off they go. Captain Doty signals the big indicator for full speed ahead. Below deck, the striker switches gears to forward. And we're off. Leonard and some old people head straight to the engine room. That dizzying array of gears, pipes, motors, shafts, cranks, dials, wheels, and tools the big engine pistons begin to pound. So steam puffs, motors whir, and gears click. Engineers oil the moving parts. The big paddle wheel turns faster and faster. Flags fly. Hold on to your hat. Here we go. The bell heads northeast up the big Ohio River. There she is out in the river, and there are boats everywhere. None of the other boats is like the Belle with her gingerbread trim, her twin smokestacks, her grand ballroom, and her big red paddle wheel. She just takes her time and rolls smoothly along like the beautiful lady she is. So on this page, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what it says because it's a little bit long, so we're just gonna talk about it. So the bell was first named the Idlewild. That's a word. And it was built in 1914 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So it wasn't built here in Louisville. It was built in a different city called Pittsburgh. And then the Idlewild was sent south to carry cotton and tobacco and people and even pigs across the Mississippi, the Mississippi River between Memphis, Tennessee and Arkansas. There wasn't a bridge then. So the Idlewild, which is what it was called before, was a working steamboat that helped transfer goods, okay, across rivers. So, but then in 1931, the Idlewild couldn't find much work anymore and she ended up in Louisville running trips back and forth to an amusement park along the Ohio River. She also worked as a tugboat and she pushed barges all day up and down the Mississippi River. That was during one of the wars. After the war, she left Louisville and then she was named the Avalon. She went up and down western rivers from Stillwater, Minnesota to New Orleans, Louisiana. So she's been a lot of places. 
and she went from Pennsylvania to Nebraska. Most steamboats only lasted a few years, but the Avalon kept going and going. She worked really hard, and then she became really run down and then abandoned. Her parts were starting to get sold off, and she was going to be sold for scrap. But the people of Louisville saved the bell. In 1962, the county bought her at auction, and they rebuilt her decks, and they overhauled the old engines, they repainted her inside and out, and they cleaned her up until she looked as shiny as a new silver dollar. And that was when she was renamed the Bell of Louisville. It means the beauty of Louisville. People ride this boat of dreams to celebrate. Whatever you're celebrating, whatever makes you jump for joy, just enjoy the ride. So when you're on the bell, you leave the city and you go out into the river and it's quiet and there's a cool breeze on your face. If it's a hot day, that might feel good. And you feel like you're part of the boat, part of the river, part of the earth. And while you're on the bell, you can watch the engineers and the firemen and the pilot and you can talk to Captain Doty. And you can also buy souvenirs. You can get a snack like popcorn at the snack bar. Afterwards, in the grand ballroom, everyone dances. Near Six Mile Island, the bell turns around. So this is an island in the river, in the Ohio River. It's called Six Mile Island. And the bell will go all the way there and then turn back around and head back down toward the city of Louisville. So Leonard and some of the other people on board rush to the rail to watch. For a few moments, the giant red paddle wheel turns in reverse. Then she switches gears and chugs forward back to the city. And there they are. Everyone does something different on the bell. You might just sit and enjoy the ride. Some people get married on the bell. You might have a little party there. The deckhands get the lines ready and they have to slow to half speed. Then they have to swing her around and the pilot spins the giant wheel and the mate tosses the line to shore. That's how they get back to shore. Okay, They have to toss this big rope to somebody on the deck who can catch it and tie the boat back to the dock. Captain Doty blows the whistle. Toot, 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 toot. And people take photos and they might shake hands and they might hug their new friends. And they'll say, so long, it was nice to meet you. It's always hard to say goodbye. And then when you're done riding the bell, somebody that you're with might say, sorry about your hat. So in the story, Leonard lost his hat and his mother says, sorry about your hat. It's all right. I can get another one. Did you have a good time? It was awesome. And that is the story of All Aboard the Bell of Louisville. Another part of this Derby week, along with the steamboat race, is in the past, we always had the balloon race and we had the balloon glow. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that because it is changing a little bit, but there are some things that you can still do together at home, like making those fun crafts and you can do some fun derby things at home. But one thing is the hot air balloons. And I thought we would do a song or a rhyme about some balloons. We're still going to see balloons flying through the sky because lots of people will fly their hot air balloons all spring and summer. So you still can look up in the sky and see the balloons, okay? Just look up anytime when it starts getting warmer and you'll start seeing some flying. So this is a little rhyme that we're gonna do and it's about different colors. So I want you to help me and tell me what color you see when I hold up the balloon, okay? So what color do we have here first? Did you say red? 
You're right. So this is how the song goes, okay? And once you catch on, you can sing it along with me. It goes like this. Red, red is the color I see. It's this balloon flying over me. I look up high, high in the sky, and the red balloon passes by. Oh, there goes the red balloon. Okay, what color is next? What color is this balloon? So we're gonna go through a lot of different colors. Can you tell me what this one is? It is, it's brown. Very good. Okay. We're gonna sing it together, you ready? It's really simple, it goes, brown, brown is the color I see. It's this balloon flying over me. I look up high, high in the sky as the brown balloon passes by. Okay, now the brown balloon is gone. I wonder what color is going to be next. Do you wanna take a guess? What color you think I might hold up next? I'm going to hold up this color balloon. Do you know what this one is? Did you say green? You are right. This is a green balloon. Can you sing the song now that you know how it goes? We're just changing the color each time. Green, green is the color I see. It's this balloon flying over me. I look up high, high in the sky as the green balloon passes by. There goes the green balloon. Okay, what color is gonna be next, I wonder? What's your favorite color? I wonder if I'll hold it up. Do you have your favorite color in your mind? Okay, let me see if this is your favorite color. This is the one I'm gonna do next. Is this your favorite color? What color is this? This is blue, you're right. Okay, here we go. Blue, blue is the color I see. It's this balloon flying over me. I look up high, high in the sky as the blue balloon passes by. So this will be a fun thing you can also do. You can blow up your own balloons at home and sing this song together. Okay, it's a great way to recognize colors and to reinforce naming colors together, okay? Okay, I know a lot of you are probably waiting for a certain color. Is anybody waiting for this color? What color is this one? Did you say pink? Yes, you're right. I love pink too. Let's sing about the pink balloon. Pink. Pink is the color I see. It's this balloon flying over me. I look up high, high in the sky as the pink balloon passes by. There it goes. Okay, we're gonna do a couple more. I want you to think about colors that we haven't done yet because one of them is my favorite color. One color that we haven't talked about yet is Miss Erin's favorite color, okay? And it's this one. This is my favorite color. Do you know what color this is? Can you guess? Can you tell me? It's yellow. Very good. Yeah, that's my favorite. I love yellow. It's a favorite time of year too. The thing's yellow. Spring is here. Yellow, yellow is the color I see. It's this balloon flying over me. I look up high, high in the sky as the yellow balloon passes by. Very good. Okay, we're gonna do one more color. Okay, and this last one is purple. Very good. Purple's another fun color. Are you ready? Purple, purple is the color I see. It's this balloon flying over me. I look up high, high in the sky as the purple balloon passes by. Very good. Thank you all for helping me. Give yourselves a little hand. You all did a great job with those colors and helping me sing that song. We're gonna do one more story, a 
as we finish up our story time today. Okay, so the last book that I wanted to share with you today is a newer story that I just found recently, and it's called, And the People Stayed Home. This is by Kitty O'Meara, and it's illustrated by Stefano Di Cristofaro and Paul Pereira. So this is a really beautiful story. It's more like a poem, poetry. And the reason I wanted to share it last in this story time today is because we've been talking about steamboats and the balloons and we know that this time of year, a lot of activities that we might have done during Derby or with our families or gathering, we might be doing something different. You know, you might have gone down to watch the steamboat race or you might have gone to Thunder of Louisville or the parade or other things that might not happen in the same way we're used to. So this is a story that kind of talks about what we've been through this past year and how we've kind of changed and adapted. And I think it's a really nice story to end. And it's called, And the People Stayed Home. And the people stayed home and they listened and read books. Have you been doing a lot of reading at home together with your family? I know you've probably been doing a lot of school at home or in the beginning you were doing a lot of things that had to do with school at home and rested and exercised and made art. Did you do that? Have you been exercising? Have you learned something new together with your family? Have you made some art and played games? What a nice thing that we have all this time to do these things with the people that we love and learned new ways of being and were still. And they listened more deeply. Some meditated, some prayed, some danced. So everybody does things differently and everybody deals with what we're doing and what we have to deal with right now. Everybody deals with it differently. Some met their shadows And the people began to think differently. Did you do some gardening? Did you learn how to plant some new things? And the people healed. And in the absence of people living in ignorant, dangerous, and heartless ways, the earth began to heal. And I think that's what I love the most about all this. It's been hard but I think we're healing. And when the danger passed and the people joined together again, they grieved their losses and made new choices. And dreamed new images. So now we're thinking differently about how we're going to live now and create a new ways to live and heal the earth fully as they had been healed. And this is a book you can find in the library. Maybe your grown up or somebody wants to check it out. We can get that for you and reserve it because in the back, the author talks a lot about some things we can talk about together when you're kind of dealing with what we've been doing this past year. But that is called, And the People Stayed Home. So I hope you have a safe time celebrating whatever you might do for the Kentucky Derby. Maybe you're gonna have your own parade, or maybe you can do some crafts together. Maybe you can go find where the parade is going to go. So I hope you stay safe and healthy, and we will see you soon, okay? We're going to sing a goodbye song to end story time. And I really thank you all for joining me today. So let's wave our hand. And it goes like this. Goodbye, goodbye. We'll see you soon. See you soon. See you soon. Goodbye, goodbye. We'll see you soon. 
on another day. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.